Крылта бой. Крылта бой. Я и говорю, что чуть-чуть хотел добавить. Когда странное излучение и, части... и странные частицы – это два разных Все. понятия. В реакторе, из которого выходит странное излучение, которое можно назвать торсионным, либо, как Болдарев называет, сверхтекучим спинновым током, это излучение выходит наружу. В среде уже воздушной под действием этого излучения происходит спин ориентации среды. То есть среда приобретает магнитные домены, то есть она уже становится когерентной. И уже в среде воздушной образуются макроклассы, которые как раз уже и делают и треки, и распадаются. То есть это причина образования странных частиц, это странное излучение, выходящее из реактора. Вопрос. Боб Гриньер. Okay, so in in this slide, this is a composite of about um, five or six uh, uh, frames from 60 frames per second uh, camera. And there is a slight gap between each frame, which you can see here and here. This is track one, and as it comes up, it bends around track two. Um, it, this is not so interesting for me because uh, they are um, passing each other in the same frame. But the very interesting one is this one ends here, and this one is already starting to bend round up towards it. And then as this comes round here, it bends that way, and then this one bends back on itself, and this changes the orientation of that. But the most interesting for me is this one here, where... When this is at this point, this one has already seen that it's coming in this direction and it's bending around and it's affected by it. So um, the other point is that we, we observe these things coming out of what I consider as coherent matter clusters uh, in these multi-layered brass cathodes. So we have gaps between these brass cathodes and it's all extremely well described on our YouTube channel. Okay, and we have seen these structures split and merge with the divided segments showing the same in phase structure. So I have um, in in this uh, image, you can see an old uh, SEM from uh, um, Ken Shoulders. Here is the EVOs punching through. This is a dual EVO. I think this is either singles or dual EVOs. But actually, uh, Ken Shoulders didn't notice this where there was a strange radiation track cutting through the aluminium. And we found that when it does cut through metals, it, change, it tends to change the, uh, the polarization of light, and also it changes uh, um, uh, uh, potentially magnetic, but it's polarization uh, of the material. I don't know whether it's reorganizing it, but I showed some reorganization of aluminium. And here, these are these layered brass plates Here's the anode, and this is the cathode. And I will show you what happens here. And I can just step through it. So there's a, there's a, it builds up, and then you have an explosive event, and one of these structures comes out of the explosive event. Okay? So I'm going forward and backwards here, so you can see it. And I, I believe that this structure is the type of structure that, that was uh, in the work of Ken Shoulders uh, from whenever it was, 1980s or 1990s. Um, uh, so there's this one. Then here's, uh, we, we basically replicated every form of so-called strange radiation tracks. And there are many, many to choose from in here. But fortunately, I don't have to go through that because I have... Uh... Bob, 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 just, just a moment. May, may I interrupt you? Yes. I, I wanted to explain something for my colleagues. Друзья, вот они в свое время, вот и в частности Боб, обнаружили, что если в темной комнате в свете лампы, они просто видят, как эти штуки летают в воздухе. Вот что поразительно, потому что лампа их освещает. И в отраженном свете они эти пролеты эти видят, и это регистрируется на быстрых камерах. Вот что он нам показывает. То есть это не следы на каких-то там подложках, а это просто пролеты в воздухе. Боб, continue, please. So you can see some uh, typical strange radiation tracks here in M&M. Uh, you've got uh, ones orbiting around each other. We have a wide selection of those. And these extreme interactions, I think this is actually two tracks that come together 
and they form this this figure of eight loop. It's actually not one track that's doing this. It's two, and they're they're self they're interacting between the two. It, it's a it's a piece of great beauty in in my uh, opinion. Uh, here is some more. The only one that I captured quite easily, which looks like a toroid, is this one where it actually has thickness on on the edge. Uh, uh, and it's just a straight uh, uh, exotic vacuum object traveling in a straight line. We have simulated these in a computer program in a 3D software using toroids and, and uh, two toroids uh, rotating, rotating around their own axis and the common center of mass. So I, I will do more work on that. But if you look at this particular track here, there's a ball lightning track that's almost exactly like that in the literature. Um, uh, and many other tracks that you've seen. The, in this one, it looks like it's going through this piece of brass here. I'm not sure, but I think that's interesting in its own right. Um, I spoke about this one where uh, it, it, for me, I consider that it is a positive and a negative uh, exotic vacuum object. I think most of these are possibly uh, positive or negative, one or the other, but they're not pairs. Um, it's it's it, they're there where you just get the kind of straight tracks, but they do interact with each other, but only with each other, not with the electric or magnetic fields in the environment. Um, so that's it's, it's very quick. You have to catch these things. Now, comparing it to natural ball lightning, um, obviously, you've got this one here, which uh, looked like the one that I just showed you earlier. But this is in Solin's uh, 2001 patent, figure 21. And uh, we, we simulated that track here. In, in our chamber and caught on camera. Uh, extremely similar track here. This is a, a classic one from Hestal and uh, Ball Lightning, and it's a, a, a hit a tree here and got this track here. So we've seen many like that. And this actually was caught by someone in the outback in Australia. And this is a Ball Lightning track caught on a high resolution camera. And each one of these segments here is a frame at 60 frames per second. And I've composited that in there. So this is very similar to the type of tracks we get here. So I think it, it, it is ball lightning is a macro version of these things. Uh, if we look at what's done in Hestal and, and here in on the other side of the planet in Australia. Um, so I spoke about this extreme interaction uh, um, previously in my presentations uh, as easy last year. You can see this, uh, I, I took this from Bichkov's, one of Bichkov's uh, um, books, uh, but this is a natural ball lightning with these periodic kinks here. We have the periodic kinks here in, in the emissions uh, uh, from this material. Um, but the most interesting is this three tracks here, because, and you might not be able to see this, but you'll be able to get the slides. The emission comes out of an explosive event. It travels around, it hits the cathode, it then bounces and travels around in the opposite direction. And then at this point, another one comes out and it then orbits around this one. This completely removes the argument that this is a hot particle because it's orbiting around another particle. Uh, and then another one, again here marked in purple, comes out and that orbits around the two that are already becoming in sync. However, the collection of three destabilizes collective structure and they start separating. Then there is this one that I've marked in yellow. It's bounced off the floor here and then it comes up and in one frame, it does a 180 degree orbit at a distance around this track. And then um, it then when it's gone past it, it then orbits around it the opposite direction. So when it's coming in, in forwards, it orbits around one way. And then when, it, when it's going away, it orbits around the other direction. So these things are not do not appear to be affected by electric or magnetic fields unless they are ex, ex, extremely close to the source of electric or magnetic field. And this comes down to why I believe aluminium is the most suitable material, because it's paramagnetic, unlike the other spin elements of gold, uh, silver, and copper, which are also high uh, conductivity. These are very, very important aspects. But also, um, it is a single isotope, and it has flexibility like lithium to fuse. Uh, so there's a lot of potential energy gain. So when you look at these various components of what actually this strange radiation is doing, um, then it makes sense why certain elements work and others don't. 
In this experiment, we can see that we've replicated the tracks of uh, Claude Deval, which was uh, presented by Jean-Francois Genest in 2015. Um, this is on whatever material it is, but we have them and we have these recorded from multiple camera angles. So we can we can we can uh, triangulate the the type of track that has been made. You can see here uh, how this progresses. It's, it's very quick, but you can see it's coming out. Uh, and these are the typical spiral tracks. Again, it's it's from the area where the coherent matter is formed. Um, this track um, is is made of, I think, four segments. And uh, if I go here, I believe this is equivalent to Baranov's track that he got in his uh, bismuth salts experiment. You can see the explosive event of the breakdown of the coherent matter and the coherent matter traveling wave coming out here. Um, and note that this, this, this is a fair distance here. However, um, the exposure is at uh, one sixty the second. So these things aren't traveling at the speed of light. They, they actually have a measurable speed, um, which you could probably determine uh, from this particular video. Um, here's a whole bunch of other ones uh, merged onto a single frame. And then on the end here, this is an example in uh, a cavitation system of Roshinamaza. This is a stainless steel plate. And using a DynoLite Edge 3 Plus, this device here, and using the polarizing filter, you don't see anything unless you turn the polarizing filter around and you, imme you immediately see the, the track pop out. Um, and it's very satisfying to do that. So this is produced by the yin yang on a cavitator. Uh, and it can't, we recorded these things coming out of the center of the vortex. And they, they have various structures, but I believe this is equivalent to the one that I just showed you a, a little while ago, uh, which is in um, uh, a, you know, this is one, two, three. I think there's the four frames that I merged together. And we've also caught what I believe is the, the collapsed wave function of the coherent matter. And in this case, uh, this is, uh, it would appear a diamond mesh. Um, and I believe that in the, the center of these gaps, so basically this is, is pure carbon, but in uh, this braided fashion, um, in the gap here, I believe that it would be synthesizing helium. Um, Bo, maybe. Bo, Bo, uh, yes. tell something about the, di the, uh, the, uh, not, uh, the, not distances, uh, what are the, uh, whites of this line of these tracks of this uh, of this uh, part particle on the left side of this uh, this, this one figure. so yes. this, this, for example this one yeah so this is uh produced in a vega experiment like i say you can go and see how to do a vega experiment on our youtube channel um in this experiment it, it, it's the ones where you see these kind of events going on and it, there was copper, and the base here is pure uh, copper and oxygen. But and lying size, size, size of, of this particle. Oh, uh, it's 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 quite large. Um, I can go and find it and come back to you later in this session, and I will show you the. Uh, well, the it, it, approximately, no, 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 no. no I, I, I actually, I, I think, I think offhand, um, this is about the each of these braided sessions. They're all two microns. So the actual size of of the webbing is two microns. So I guess if that's two, that would be twenty. There's the repeating pattern here. Here, yeah, you've got this repeating pattern that you also see here, here, and here. And вот here. это вот это вот это очень похоже на то, что нам показывал только что э, из шариков этих магнитных чижов. Очень похоже на эту штучку. Continue, please, Bob. But, oh, yeah. but, so but, I... but, take, it, but, but Bob, um, take into account that you are not alone. Uh, uh, some people also would like to uh, to say something. Uh, but oh, yeah, yeah. So the end of your of your speech, please. Okay. So, um, uh, so I, if I can go back to the other presentation which I presented, um, uh, where are we? Um, this in in aluminium, I think, was probably one of the most striking findings. Um, and I will, I need to press present here. Okay, um, is that when these? It, it, this is for a ninety second experiment in a forty three kilohertz ultrasonic cleaning tank uh, using suspended aluminium foil with a solid 
uh, well, a, a piece of polycarbonate above, above, so you get the standing waves in the water column. Um, there were these uh, coherent matter traveling waves, as I, I call them, uh, traveling through the uh, aluminium foil, and instantaneously, you can you can see that this is very similar. In it, it, it's like two things orbiting around each other, but they are instantaneously changing the structure. Now, this might be why. Um, Bob, 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 just a moment. Я для 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 нашей аудитории говорю, смотрите, опять похоже, как будто вот эти шарики этого самого тяжелого, вот они тут легли на эту поверхность и вот лежат. Вот как будто вот так шариками все это усеяно. Continue, please, Bob. Um, so uh, I think this might be why you are able to see these things with um, uh, a polarizing filter, because this is actually about a thousand lines per inch. It's like a polarizing filter. <laughs> and it's the same. So it's actually like you would use a diffraction grating. So I think it might be why these things show up on on polarizing filters again this again is if you look down here it's uh this is a, a 20 micron scale this is five microns so it's about five microns across here so these are about uh, one or two microns across and it's the same on the plasma experiments where you have this uh structure this toroidal structure so back back to the original question um uh so this is this is the magnetic uh, field, and we, we, this is the core, the the, the iron rich crenellated sphere, and the this zone is the zone of the electromagnetic phantom. In my view, currently, I, I reserve the the option to change that, um, but because we know that this is zinc uh, uh, oxides and copper oxides, and they're all diamagnetic. It pushes it away. They can't come into the zone that has created this ball and the, the, the electromagnetic phantom that is here. That is that is my view. And um, it's these uh, th three three frames here um, that that in my view it's uh, sending out a fractal toroidal moment that is uh, cohering uh, dark matter in front of the path of travel of uh, the uh, exotic vacuum object, whatever you like to call it. And the other ones are interacting with that in the superfluid uh, um, medium uh, in front of it. So th this, this is my concept. It's the only thing that I, I would like other people to give me some idea of what other thing could explain this phenomena, what, where it only occurs in a very, very tight proximity and relative to the direction of travel of the particles. And this would also explain many of these extreme deviations in tracks that we've observed on X-rays uh, and on other witness materials in the past. So this is really, for me, the, the, the single biggest thing that I would like other alternative explanations for um, that doesn't involve the superfluid dark matter condensate that we all live in. So that, that's my question to you in, 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 uh, based on my observations. Thank you. I would really appreciate Leonid's we'll be opinion. Very, very interesting, I must say. And, uh, I would like to read uh, this material uh, about your experiments. And can you send me this material? I, I will send you the presentations. I will send you the full resolution images, okay. the videos, whatever. I'm really interested in your views on, on what might very be going on. Very interesting. Thank you.